three, two, one. And we are live! Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. So it is Saturday, and today, I almost forgot, but today, I've been reminded this is the 25th anniversary of Dark Force 2 Jedi Knight, a really awesome game from LucasArts on the PC, which I love. Um, unfortunately, I won't be playing that tonight, but it is there is another anniversary for today. And that is the one year to the day anniversary of the posting of the video that began HeroQuest fans, which was my unboxing of the classic 1990 uh, HeroQuest, the edition that I grew up playing. Not my original game by any means, because it belonged to my brother, but I bought my own uh, classic edition. And I did a video unboxing it in preparation for when we were going to unbox the remake because we were still waiting for that to come out uh, October 8th, 2021. So anyway, it's been a year. It's been pretty cool. It's been fun uh, doing the HeroQuest fans thing. Originally, it was just kind of a, a placeholder because my YouTube channel been around a long time, XSC3. And I just decided rather than starting over from scratch, I would just make it HeroQuest, home of HeroQuest fans. Um, and then, of course... I've been a member of the Ye Old Inn community uh, of HeroQuest online for a good many years. I lurked for a long time before I started posting there. So I think it was really like 2017 when I started becoming active there. But I never thought it would grow to the point where it is now. So I'm really happy about that. I'm happy for the community that we've uh, been able to grow again with a lot of help from a lot of other people. Um, I had some great help from Shadzar uh, getting the Discord going. I think that was pretty much his idea. I didn't really, I hadn't really used it much before and didn't really think much of it. Didn't realize how helpful it can be. Um, Icarith helped a lot. So did uh, Strange Bus. He, um, he and I both kind of got into Twitch around the same time. Um, several other people. Um, Lee over at Covert Nerd. Dot net covertner.net podcast i mean that really got me going as far as like getting my name out there and realizing hey you know i could kind of promote this thing and um i Kareth and i we played a lot of games on zoom i think he was the most regular of all the people because we played several different people from the community over zoom back when it was free and easy to to use but we never really streamed games before. But there's a lot of other people, of course, who have helped us since then. Al Viler has done a lot with the graphics. Uh, people like Leerlek and Sika Shem, moderators in Discord and on Twitch. Um, a lot of people have given feedback, suggestions. PSK. PSK. <laughs> um, knucklehead cool guy um, comes from the D&D &D, uh, painting community and he's given me a lot of f suggestions and feedback and been a fun guy to play with in games uh, various other people Azure Megid who helped show me how to get um, tabletop simulator working which we've used a few times successfully after I spent a lot of time dismissing it and thinking it was just never gonna work for me and now it does and we use it occasionally um, and Carmin, who has been our insider guy, uh, he works for Hasbro, Avalon Hill. He's given us, like, uh, a lot of, like, leaks and rumors and stuff, like, as he has with several other, other communities. And it's been cool to kind of have that connection. Again, I'm not an insider or anything in the industry. It's just, uh, it's just kind of cool to have somebody around like that who can actually give you, uh, just a little bit more insight into the process. Who else? There's other people that I'm forgetting, I'm sure, that I would definitely want to thank. Yeah, you know who you are. A lot of people who are early joiners to our Discord. Who've just been around for a long time. I'm just going to look through. Gasan, or Gasan, was one of our early uh, joiners. 
some people have probably changed their names since then. The Monstrous Encounters has been here a long time. Yeah, of course, PSK Knucklehead I mentioned. Striker 667. And it's just like a domino effect. You know, people start joining and then more people come in. R&B. A lot of people from the community at Yield Inn, of course. Amalgamash. Um, a lot of his videos inspired me. And it's just, it's funny because, like, he'll do um, almost the same topic that I'm doing. But, I mean, he has a different opinion on a lot of things. And kind of a different audience. But... Um, it's always cool to, and we, we kind of joke around like we've got some kind of rivalry. He's more popular than I am, um, and it's cool that we've done been able to do some collaborative stuff. Yeah, and he was the first person that we actually interviewed on um, HeroQuest fans, like trying to connect with another, I hate the term influencer, but, you know, a person in the community who uh, is well known, just kind of get to know each other. See Andaras. If I forget you, I uh, I apologize, but you know who you are. People have influenced me and helped me out. Blaze, I think, has been here a long time. Let's see. Yeah, Elviler's game room is pretty awesome. see some of these people I think have kind of popped in without me realizing it do my Montalto really good with uh, leaks news in like foreign editions um, of course Draith oh that's Drath different person than Draith <laughs> but he's been a while here for a while dread axe same thing let's see who else Eudoxio Eudoxio has done a lot of like stuff recently with like leaks and things Fubar Jr. Give me your gold is from yield in who else Hawkat 139 really good with the testing he's got his own I think that's mentor study is his discord so he's got his own uh, community but he's still a part of ours Jace or Jace or Jay Longtime player with us, cool guy. His War Builder 22J or J22 on YouTube. Let's see, Jonesy's been here a long time. Just going through them alphabetically. Lefty, he's been here a while. Some of these people I haven't talked to in a long time. Lauren's been here a long time. Luca Pachi, of course, with the um, Dwarf and Wizard quest pack stuff and he I think he sold me some miniatures at one point some black miniatures those are rare and cool Let's see Maddie B I mean I want to thank each and every person who's joined our discord who's joined um, us on YouTube who's joined us on discord I said that right twitch <laughs> who's joined us on twitch People have sent feedback. Oatmeal Lumps has been here a while. Off Kilted. Let's see. Piper. Kordak. Was spelled with a Q. Ron Moore, of course. Even though he doesn't lurk a lot in our area, I mean, he's a cool guy. He's inspired me a lot with the streams. Just kind of showing me how just a simple, humble guy can, who just loves doing what he does can um, kind of start from nowhere and nothing to be, you know, not a not necessarily a big deal, but, you know, a, a fixture of the community. And I, I really admire him and the work that he does. So Ron Moore is a cool guy. He's always positive, supportive. So, even though he's not a big a part of HeroQuest, he's just a really cool guy. Let's see, who else? People I want to single out. Sir Death, of course, second interview. And um, he got us playing on the companion app. Again, another guy in the YouTube HeroQuest streaming community. Um, big influencer. 
Uh, Squidge Monster. Um, he does the HQ Builder. So the Hero Quest. Um, create your own quest builder through a web page thing. And he's open to feedback. He's been around a while. He's given some good advice. And he takes advice well. Constructive criticism. Good guy. Stratos VX from the community. Of course, Strange Bus. I already have said a lot of good things about him. It's fun to work with on the rant cast and everything too. Verg. Oh man, Verg. He can be a he can be a tough guy sometimes, like giving us uh, feedback. But I mean, I really appreciate his feedback, and I hope he never stops giving it because it's I really value it and. Just a cool guy to have around. Let's see, Vox77, I think it's been around a while. Meet the Pyro. It's been around for a while. But anyway, yeah, if you're a part of our community, thank you. Thank you for your support. Even if you just lurk, even if you just dropped in to say hi once or twice. Um, I do appreciate it. Everybody who's ever followed, everybody who's ever subbed. Everybody who has ever recommended us. Anixius, I want to thank all the little people, all 32 millimeter friends and enemies. Ah, that's great. That's great. Thanks. And welcome to the stream. Yeah, so I've just been kind of reflecting back on the fact that it's been a year since I did that um, YouTube video, that unboxing of classic Hero Quest from 1990, and kind of started Hero Quest fans. And really, the, the choice to do Twitch and Discord and um, YouTube, I mean, it was, I guess I was fam most familiar with YouTube, but I've never, I'd never streamed. And I still, I tried once or twice and I just couldn't get it to work. So I thought Twitch is a lot easier to learn. And yeah, I associate Twitch with like video games and cheesecake and stuff, but not so much board games. And I thought, thought, okay, well, maybe this is something unique we can do and... My ulterior motive was I just wanted people to play with, you know, people who I could play HeroQuest with and also get some feedback on it too, you know, just talk about stuff I enjoy. So it's a good outlet for that. Yeah, time sure flies. And I mean, uh, being in a pandemic and have everything kind of like locked down and people just kind of far away, it was a nice way to connect and also just being able to actually talk to, not necessarily see per face to face, but at least talk to people from the community. Because, I mean, when, when else are you going to see most of these people? You know, we're in different states, different countries, different time zones, different hemispheres. We don't all speak the same language. And yeah, it's still generally people from the same country, same language group. But we get together when we can. I know not everybody can do the time slot that we do. You know, the Friday afternoon, 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time, and then the 6 to 10 uh, Central Time on Saturdays but still it's fun so yeah thanks everybody and of course yeah of course uh, <laughs> without hero quest uh, we might not be doing this I'm not sure what we'd be doing because I don't have a great setup for well I do have a great setup now where I could be playing video games like strange bus does um, but I'm just more interested in like older games and I like multiplayer games, but it's like, how can you do that successfully while streaming at the same time? So I don't know. I'll probably have to learn from the pros on that. But for now, uh, we'll just keep doing the board games thing. And here's to another year and see how it goes. But anyway, um, welcome to HeroQuest fans. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, let me just check the chat here and see who we've got. This time, we've got Nat Zelly, Anixius. Welcome. So, if you haven't joined us before, how this works, um, how this works is uh, once a week we do try to play Hero Quest, and we do have some characters that are already in the game, some heroes that are already playing the game. I I take the role of Zargon, the evil wizard GM, and the people who join can take the role of a hero. Um, we've got a few heroes that are already in the game, so we've got a uh, Barbarian, we've got a Guardian Knight, we've got an Alchemist, aka the Wizard, uh, but we can insert other heroes that we've used in the past. Uh, we've got a Dwarf, we've got a, an Elf, um, we can do the uh, Rogue Heir of Elethorn, the Rogue, um, I've been meaning to insert that character in there, 
Mine is on order. Supposedly, I'm going to get it from Big Bad Toy Store Tuesday evening at the latest. But it's already in my town, so I might get it even sooner than that. I might get it Monday. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I was surprised because we weren't expecting it until December. So it's, uh, it's come early. So yeah, if you're uh, if you're one of those people who wants to get the Rogue Air of Elethorn and you're like me and you don't like to do pre-orders, you'd rather just order something and have it arrive within a week, now's the time to do it. Now a lot of places are doing pre-orders for the Mage of the Mirror, which some people have called Mage in the Mirror, but it's Mage of the Mirror, Elf Quest Pack remake. That's uh, They've been saying spring, but then the official date is February 1st. So places are pre-ordering that now, but... Again, I'm just keeping an eagle eye out. As soon as it ships, if it ships early, I'll get it from whichever retailer shipping it early, but not GameStop. No offense if you work there or if you like them, but I just, I've had some bad experiences, and so I'm just going to steer clear of GameStop for now. But hey, if you want to take your chances, it's up to you. But yeah, um, I mean, I have the ability to play the elf uh, quests even before that remake comes out, but. I want to support it. I mean, so far what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. There's still quite a few of the cards we haven't seen, but mainly I'm curious to see what's inside the quest book itself. Because if they changed one card, maybe that's all they changed, or maybe they changed other stuff. Hey, Jacer, welcome. So yeah, if you're watching uh, us on Twitch, that is where we are live. If you're watching this on YouTube, then it's a replay. If you're watching on YouTube, it is not live. But nevertheless, if I happen to be, usually I'm at work or something, but when it premieres on YouTube, but um, if I'm on YouTube and I, I'm in the chat, I'll try to answer your questions in the chat, or at least do a response. But if I don't get to you, don't think I'm ignoring you. It's just that I may be busy doing something else. Because we have to wait 24 hours between uh, the live stream on Twitch and the replay posted, premiered on YouTube. But anyway, yeah, I also want to thank the creator of the uh, creators of the royalty free royalty free music we use. So Alexander Nakarada. I'm not sure if I've said his name in a while, but he does most of the music, the royalty free music that we play, the kind of medieval fantasy music in the background. And I'm thankful that there's artists out there who allow their stuff to be used, which is a simple acknowledgement. Uh, another one of those artists is Darren Curtis. Uh, Chiptune, not sure what Chiptune is, if that's just the name of the company. There's Alex Productions, uh, Slainte, S-L-A with the accent mark, I-N-T-E, and Random Mind. Let's see, Keys of the Moon. I think those are all the artists that we use from the medieval fantasy Royalty free music. I enjoy them. They're not too unobtrusive. They're not too obtrusive. They're fun. So yeah, the way we do it is we'll play the game. We just uh, point the camera at the board and we go. If you've got dice, you can use your dice. You can use your character sheet. That's really all you need. A basic familiarity with Hero Quest is fine. Uh, it helps, but you don't have to. You could be a brand new player and don't feel bad. Don't feel bashful. We'll uh, keep you going. We'll uh, show you the ropes. But yeah, if you're uh, going to the Discord, um, the it's displayed in the graphics on your screen right there. But I'm also going to post it in the Discord itself. And this is a permanent link, so you can go ahead and share it with your friends. Happy to have more people on here. And if you have Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Prime Gaming, uh, you can actually, if you so choose, you can use that for your month as a subscription to this channel which means you get no ads and it also boosts your gold coins oh yeah that's the next thing channel points so the way channel points work in twitch generally is you can use your channel points in the chat in the twitch chat so over on the right hand side um it may look different if you're using an app but it'll say send message and underneath send message you'll see a little symbol a little square that's orange and purple that's your gold coins, your channel rewards. So you click on that, and it'll say HeroQuest fans, rewards, and challenges, and you'll see a list. So there's like choose option six, um, let the GM decide, etc. 
Actually, I have to make a quick change on there. Because some of those choices are configured for when we do game book readings. Oh yeah, we do that a lot on Fridays. We like to read game books. So not just Choose Your Own Adventure, not just the Dave Morris Hero Quest novels, but other games where you get to make choices. Um, so... We'll just turn on the cardinal directions. So yeah, you can tell you can use your channel points to tell us to do stuff. You can influence the quest. So you can tell us to go as one of the car four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. You can tell us to search for stuff. You can uh, buy a potion for a hero. You can buy a skill card for a hero. You can suggest that somebody use magic or alchemy. Uh, suggest an uncommon feat. You can give a bonus monster to Zargon. Bonus threat card for Zargon. So you can help the bad guys if you want. Now, the, the general rule, and I want to clarify this, is if you're taking control of a hero tonight, or any time we're playing, don't use your channel points uh, during the quest. It's really for people who are in the chat to influence the game. So if you're taking control of a hero, it's all your in-game uh, stuff. You know, your equipment, your spells, skills, you know, items, potions, whatever. But the people in the chat, I mean, it's fine if you want to lurk, but take a look at your gold coins. I mean, they build up just, just sitting there. And yeah, if you sub, you get more, but you don't have to pay for them. And yeah, you can do funny sound alerts and other stuff. But you can influence the, the outcome of the quest. It's the interactivity we enjoy. Hey, and uh, shout out to Anixius' son. It's his third birthday, so happy birthday. And I understand if you're preoccupied with that. But I appreciate you dropping by all the same. Three years old. That's a big one. All right. So there is a... Uh, I do have uh, one guy who's going to be joining a little bit later. Like at nine. So... I know that Jacer, he's been playing with us before. I'm not sure about Nat Zelly. But if any of you are wanting to take control of a hero, I'm all ears. Let me know. This first hour is usually us just kind of getting people together to play the game. So yeah, if you're in our Discord, you can just go over to Quest Talk for Twitch. That's a voice channel. Turn your mic on. Start talking on the stream. If you're not comfortable talking on the stream, you can still play using the chat. We've done that before. Yeah, the first hour is tough. Well, depending on your time zone, I mean, I understand you might be just finishing dinner. You might be just getting off of work. Uh, you might be tucking your kids in or doing something else. I understand, or maybe uh, maybe you're just on a phone, and so it's not convenient. Some people are driving home, but um, you know, I don't mind talking Hero Quest. So, I think what I might do is I might just kind of do some game book reading while we're waiting for people to join. But Jay, sir, are you wanting to play tonight? In case anybody's wondering, we're doing the Frozen Horror Quest 6. No peeking now. <laughs> uh, we're doing Quest 6, um, the Frosted Path. Actually, let me grab my quest book. Yeah, the, this is a group quest, the Frosted Path. And it's already in progress, so I would say we are... I would say we've got maybe, it's kind of hard to estimate sometimes. I 
I'd say we're about halfway through. So we may not get done uh, this session, but that's just kind of how we do it. We just pick up the next time. Oh, cool. So, Jacer, you're cooking dinner. Nice. Yeah, so maybe what I'll do, I mean, I, I understand people like to listen while they're doing other stuff. You know, if you're watching the dish, washing the dishes, doing laundry, uh, doing your chores, cooking dinner, painting miniatures or whatever. Um, oh, yeah, and shout out also and thank you to the person who created this uh, animation we're looking at. So you can actually grab video animations and they're free, copyright free uh, for people to use. And uh, it's Fog fog animation so let me just grab the actual notation so I can give them a proper thank you and of course all of that will be in the notes after we're done here in the info box when we're all done and certainly before we or by the time we actually premiere it on YouTube let me just see here Yeah, if you hear hammering, that's uh, my, I think my landlord's cleaning some things. Some people moved out, so getting things ready. Yeah, so 4K fog overlay, smoke effect from royalty free stock videos on YouTube. That's royalty free stock videos on YouTube. So check them out. And um, they have a variety of things, but yeah, it's just uh, just a nice little ambiance. I'll just put the link in the chat here for you if anybody's curious. All right, so I think we'll just do a little bit of game book reading while we're waiting. I mean, it is the... Um, it is October. It is one of my favorite times of the year. Halloween's coming up. I mean, it's different when you're a grown-up. Um, if you want to take some kids trick-or-treating or give out candy or go to a party. I mean, COVID kind of made all of that difficult these days. But it can still be done. So let me just go grab one of my books here. All right, welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. I'm your host, and I'm back. And since we are waiting on heroes tonight, I think we're just going to do some game book reading. So I want you guys to interrupt me. I want you to let me know if you're wanting to play HeroQuest, because I've got the game set up. I've got it ready to go. I've got heroes ready to go, but we just need our people. So if you're doing something else right now, don't feel bad. We've got a spot open for you. But in the meantime, we will do some reading. Nice if I could find some uh, some other music, maybe some spooky music. Royalty free, of course, because I don't want to step on any toes. I know White Bat Audio on YouTube has been recommended. Strange Bust uses a lot of his stuff, and it's really good. Horror Synthwave. Hmm. 
This sounds like it might be great. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take the plunge here. 100% copyright safe. Just credit Carl Casey. That's Carl with a K. K-A-S-E-Y at White, White Bat Audio. And of course, subscribe on YouTube. So this is Horror Synthwave, The Shape Returns. Oh, and it's uh, Halloween. How appropriate. All right, so let's uh, play this and let's see, can I loop this? Not sure if I can loop it or not. Thanks, Anisius. Okay, so we're just playing some spooky music, and we're going to be reading a book here. Just take a look through the fog here. Well, it's not really the story so far yet. I will do that once we start the game. Okay, where is it? Okay. Here we go. Okay, so this is the book that I'm looking at here for tonight. It's called Vampires, Spies, and Alien Beings. Which Way Books, number two. This would have been 99 cents back in the day by R.G. Austin. And uh, we are doing this as a course, a journalistic review. No copyright infringement intended. Fair use all the way, baby. Yeah. All right. So we'll just go ahead and read. This is from 1982. Congratulations. You have won the Grin Toothpaste Sweepstakes. Your prize is an all-expense-paid trip to a Hollywood studio lot. You're greeted at the gate by a guide who explains that three different movies are being filmed on the lot at three different locations. As you walk towards the place where the space movie is being shot, a deafening roar fills the air. The sky turns black, and then an unearthly glow hovers all around you. Oh no, what hap- it happened, cries the guide. What happened, you ask as the eerie noise begins to subside. That's what I think it is, we're in serious trouble. The special effects team has been working for months to create realism on the set of the space movie. They built a special machine that turns fantasy into reality. That explosion means that they have lost control and that the time alternator has been pushed beyond the fail-safe level. This is like some futuristic next-level stuff. What will happen to us, you ask, afraid to hear the answer. All I know is that we are doomed to live in new times and new places. The movies aren't movies anymore. They are really happening. We have exploded into a reality warp, and you and I are caught in the middle of it. The guide begins to run, and you follow him. The sky is now flashing with colors. The world turns purple, then green, then orange. As you run onto the set of the space movie, you feel your body grow light, as if gravity has disappeared, and you are no longer bound by Earth's laws. Stop! Someone shouts to you, but it is too late. You crash into an invisible barrier and fall. When you look up from the ground, you see three alien beings walking toward you. They motion for you to come with them. All right, well, it's choice time. So if you're in the chat right now, you can actually affect our decision. We're doing a game book here, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. Which way books, number two. So we have three choices. Choice number one, choose to go with the aliens. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna note that you can use your channel points to vote. Let me enable these here. So you can uh, use option one, go with the aliens. Option two, instead of going with the aliens, you can Walk across the lot to the time, the set of Nighttime Terror. So, Go With the Aliens is option one. Nighttime Terror is option two. And there is an option three, so let's get that one enabled as well. Option three is if you prefer to visit the set of the spy movie, Triple O Three. So, option one, Aliens. Option two, Nighttime Terror. Option three, Spies. So make your choice in the chat. Use your channel points, your gold coins to vote. Option one, two, or three, or let me know in the chat your option. Option three, says Anixius. 
Okay, so we've got one vote for spies. Anybody else? All right, we're just going to wait a few more seconds and we're going to go ahead and make our choice. And no, I'm not going to play the James Bond theme song. I'm sure I'll get copyright hit for that. Oh, Jacer votes for one. Aliens. All right. Anybody else? Vote now. Vampire spies and alien beings. we choose one of those others I might have to pick some different music from White Bat Audio Carl Casey We got one vote for aliens. We got one vote for spies. And see, if I pick one, am I just going to pick the tiebreaker? All right, last chance. Option one, aliens. Option two, nighttime terror. Option three, triple O three, spies. All right, well, I guess we're just going to do, um, we'll decide. So if it's a skull, we're going aliens. If it's anything else, we're going spies. Skull, looks like we're going aliens. So I guess Jacer's choice one. So let's get some alien music. Again, this is White Bat Audio, Carl Casey. Again, uh, shout out to Strange Bus for turning me on to this uh, person's cool um, royalty-free music. Let's see. What's a good alien one? All right. As you follow the aliens towards their glowing spaceship, you understand what the tour guide was saying. You are trapped in a reality warp. The actors have, indeed, become real aliens. Hasten, my friend, says one of the aliens in a computer-like voice. We must escape before the Gorks arrive. Who are the Gorks? you ask as you arrive at the spaceship. We have no time to explain, another alien shouts. He stands in an orange triangle that is glowing on the ground, and he is suddenly sucked up into the spaceship. Stand at the orange triangle if you wish to come with us, calls a voice from inside the ship. Okay, choices again. If you choose to stand on the orange triangle, that's option one. You'd rather risk staying behind, option two. So vote now, option one. Stand on the... I'm assuming that's like a teleport pad or something. Okay, Anixius voted for one. Jacer voted for one. Okay, I think that's pretty unanimous. So we're just going to see if we get beamed up. Trembling, you step into the orange triangle. The lights from the spaceship bathe you in a warm blue glow. Before you have time to change your mind, you find yourself sitting on the floor of the spaceship, surrounded by ten curious aliens. Oh, they look strange. They've got kind of like bucket heads with like antlers, big round eyes, and like where their neck should be, it almost looks like there's a little smiling mouth with uh, fangs. And they have like uh, grooves in their space suits. Okay, another choice. Do you speak first? That's option one. If you're too frightened to speak, option two. So next choice, option one, speak first. 
Option two, too scared to speak. So vote with your points, your channel points, gold coins in the chat. Nixia says option one. So he says speak. Anybody else? Too scared to vote? Just kidding. I'm just gonna go ahead and enable. I mean, sometimes they give you more than more than three choices. Yeah, please only vote for the choices that we have. But it's GM's choice. Okay, so that's two two choices for one. Thank you guys. Two votes for one. So it looks like we're gonna speak first. What's happening, you ask? I don't understand anything. We are Moosiers. From a peaceful planet many galaxies away, says the smallest alien. We sought to explore your Earth without creating panic. Making this movie was our idea. We passed the thought on to your filming people. Now it is time for us to do our experiments. Will you help us? He asks. Then he adds, If you do not want to help, we will take you for a journey in space. Okay, choices again. Option one, if you are afraid that you might be harmed by their experiments and would prefer traveling in space. So that's option one. Option two, if you choose to help the aliens. Option two. All right, let's vote again. So option one, travel through space. Option two, help them with their experiments. <laughs> Anixius chose option one, travel through space. Okay. Anybody else? I think I'll have to start getting a, a playlist going for this ambient music. Jacer says two, and Ixia says one. Interesting. All right, I'm going to do the tiebreaker again. Let's roll a, a die, so skull, we're going to do option one. Anything else, option two. Skull again, option one. All right, looks like we're traveling through space. Do not be afraid, says one of the aliens. We shall not harm you. Remain still while we lift off. The aliens seem kind. You are not so certain now. You want to go with them into space. All right, we've got another choice here. Leave the spaceship. Explain to the aliens that you have another appointment. That's option one. Option two, decide to trust the aliens enough to go with them. All right, vote now. Again, option one, go into space. Option two, trust the aliens. All right, Anixia says trust the aliens. Option two, anybody else? It's like it's just the two of you making the choices and I'm picking if we have a <laughs> disagreement. Again, I'm uh, paying attention to the chat. Once we get enough people to play HeroQuest, we'll play HeroQuest. But I'm having fun so far. I hope you are too. Ah, Jacer says too as well. Okay, we're trusting these aliens. Within seconds, the ship has transported you to the edge of your galaxy. 
You look through the giant portals and are awed by the beauty of the Earth disappearing before your eyes. The black sky is dotted with billions of glowing stars. You watch in silence until finally you cannot contain your curiosity any longer. Who are you? Where do you come from? You ask. We are the Moosiers from the Begon Galaxy, one of the aliens explains. Ours is a peaceful planet. We are interested in research. He then asks you to tell him about Earth. You explain about rivers and rainbows and the fish in the seas. You're truly enjoying yourself when you look out the portal and see a bright disc moving on a collision course towards your ship. An alarm siren wails, and the Moosiers rush frantically to their stations. That is our enemy, explains the leader. We do not intend to involve you in this. It is our battle, not yours. You must make a decision immediately. Both choices are dangerous. Through astral projection, we can try to place you back on the movie lot, where your suspense movie is being filmed. Or you can stay with us while we wage combat with our enemy. All right, choices. Option one, return to the movie lot. Option two, stay on the ship. Oh, it's like they're giving you every chance to get out of here. Alright, looks like it's unanimous, both voting to stay on the ship. Alright, we just found our friends. We're not going to abandon them now. Not What can we do about it, of course? Alright, we're staying on the ship. Noises such as you've never heard careen off the walls around you, echoing painfully in your head long after they have ceased. Blinding lights flash, hurting your eyes with their white-hot intensity. At last, there's one explosion more powerful than all the rest. The enemy has scored a direct hit on your ship. You are doomed. The end. Ah, <laughs> Yeah, we did. We did. We went out in a blaze of glory. Leroy Jenkins. Uh. Yep. Well, it looks like we were blown up. I mean, the aliens, they gave us every chance they could. So I wonder what happened. I mean, their experiment with their virtual reality thing. I mean, they were a peaceful planet, but they got destroyed by these other aliens. So does that mean the Earth is in trouble now? I guess we'll never find out. All right. Well, that was cool. It was short. I think we could do another run of it, see what happens. Let me just check the chat again here. All right. So while we're waiting for Hero Quest, we're reading Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. Which way books? I'm going to listen to White Bad Audio. Carl Casey. Okay, every camera but the one I wanted. All right, there we go. R.G. Austin's Which Way book. All right, let's change the music here, and we'll just uh, go back. Okay, so we're back on the movie lot, back where it all started, because we won this green toothpaste sweepstakes. All expenses paid to a Hollywood studio lot. Something crazy happens. There's a reality warp. And now we can choose where we want to go. We've already we went with the aliens last time. So we got three options. Option one, go with the aliens. Option two, go to nighttime terror. Option three, go to triple O three with the spies. Option one, aliens. Option two, terror. Option three, spies. I think Anik CS, you want to do the spies last time. Do you want to try that this time, or how are you guys feeling? I'm going to try it with the aliens again.
All right, vote, vote now. Option three. So Jacer says spies. Anixia says spies. All right, we're going for spies. Stand alone for a moment, shaken by what has just happened. You see the set of the spy movie directly in front of you. As you walk toward it, you pass a phone booth. The telephone in the phone booth is ringing. Without thinking, you enter the booth and pick up the receiver. Good afternoon, 003, says the voice on the other end. You will find a cassette tape under the shelf in front of you. Take it and place it in the slot behind the phone. There's a click and the voice is cut off. Curiously, you play the tape. So I guess you must have your tape player, of course. It says, There is an evil plan afoot in America. Ema Snecky is a wicked scientist who can be identified by a heart-shaped birthmark on her cheek. Ema and her cohorts, Wiley Fox and Frank N. Stein, have devised a plan to conquer America by brainwashing the entire population. They intend to drop receptor pellets into the water systems of cities and towns, beginning with Los Angeles. These pellets will alter the molecular structure of the brain cells of those who drink the water. The scientists also intend to send out high-speed subliminal messages during local television programs by penetrating the airwaves with scientific techniques that they have developed. Wiley Fox will issue orders to the people through these messages and the people, because of their altered brain cells, will be forced to obey these orders. Frank N. Stein's role is that of a hitman. And he can really hit because he has a steel arm. Beware of him. Your assignment is to apprehend the criminals and to prevent the pellets from contaminating the water system. If you should fail, you must get the antidote into the water immediately or the city will be doomed. You can pick up the latest crime-fighting devices from our arsenal in Bungalow D. D as in Delta. If you, you should need transportation, our specially equipped motorcycle is parked by the telephone booth. That is all. In 10 seconds, this tape will self-destruct. All right. Voting. Option one. If you think this is all a trick, and sh you should wait to see if the tape actually self-destructs. That's option one. If you go directly to Bungalow D, that's option two. All right, so we already got a vote. Anixius says go to Bungalow D. Anybody disagree? Should we wait for the tape to self-destruct to go to Bungalow D? I always wonder that self-destruct, is it just gonna destroy the tape or is it gonna blow you up too? How powerful is that bomb? All right, option two it is then. We're going to Bungalow D. As you leave the phone booth, a bullet whizzes past your head. You throw yourself on the ground and crawl on your belly to Bungalow D. When you arrive, you're greeted by a man. Welcome, Triple O Three, he says as he closes the door behind you. Here is an ass a variety of weapons for you to use in your assignment. I think you will find them useful. One by one, he demonstrates the newest inventions and secret weapons. You know that the suction shoes and the wrist communicator with the silent alarm could prove to be very useful, but your favorite weapon is a laser. A laser gun disguised as a ballpoint pen. You wonder if you'll ever have to use it. The man then informs you that Ema Snake has set up a secret chemistry lab where she is making the receptor pellets. The lab is somewhere on the studio lot, he says, but we don't know where. So option one, try to locate Snake's uh, chemistry lab. Option two, decide to investigate the shooting. Okay, the lab, option one, option two, investigate shooting.
All right, vote now. Option one, look for the lab. Okay, Jacer says look for the lab. Option two, investigate the shooting. Okay, looks like it's unanimous. We're voting for option one for the secret lab. Sneak. As you walk among the buildings on the lot, you notice a peculiar smell. At first you think it's rotten eggs, but then you suspect it is sulfur, an ingredient that might be used in making the pellets. You track the odor to a building at the far end of the lot. You open a door and follow the nauseating smell down a long, cor dark corridor. Suddenly, you stop. In front of a steel door are two huge Doberman pincers. Their teeth are bared. They're growling at you. It's a couple of guard dogs. Option one, try to approach the dogs. Option two, if you think it'd be wiser to back off and devise an alternate plan. All right, vote now. So you got a couple Dobermans. So Anixia says approach the dogs. But we do have that laser. Maybe we could like shine it in their eyes and blind them. Sorry to any animal lovers out there, but hey, it's either you or them, right? Of course, dogs' eyesight. I don't know if that would work. You could, it could distract them maybe. Okay. Oh. Anixius, you changed your answer to option two. So you want to back off. And so does Jacer. Okay. So you both vote to back off from the Dobruns. Let's see what happens. Remember that you're wearing an electronic ring. You slip it off your finger and place it against the wall. Then, putting your ear to the electronic eavesdropping device, you hear two voices in the room on the other side of the wall. This is it, the woman's voice says. The receptor pallets are completed. Let's go drop them in the reservoir. Aren't you going to take the antidote, Ema? The man's voice asks. What do we need that for? She asks with a wicked laugh. In 24 hours, every family in Los Angeles will be drinking our drugged water. They won't even know it. Come on, let's go. You duck into the shadows as they come out of the room. You watch as the man and woman lock the dogs in a cage and then walk away. Option one, break into the lab and search for the antidote. Option two, choose to follow Ema Snake and her companion. All right. Okay. Thanks, Anisius. Yeah, this one is like action packed. You just <laughs> quick, 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 go, go, go. So option one, break in the lab. Option two, follow them. Okay, so we got two votes for option one. Break into the lab and search for the antidote. So the pellets are completed. All right, let's do it. After you cut a hole around the lock with your laser, you open the door. Inside, there are bottles and beakers everywhere. You know that you'll only have seconds to find the antidote that will neutralize the pellets that are to be dropped into the reservoir. You're searching frantically when suddenly you see a bottle sitting apart from the others. Antidote, says the label in clear red letters. The bottle is filled with small blue capsules. You take the bottle and run to the motorcycle, fearful that you're already too late. You jump onto the motorcycle and at, or at the reservoir in 10 minutes. Just as you pull up, you watch in horror as Ema and the man dump the pellets into the water. All right, we've got three options here. So let me just listen carefully here. So option one, if you're confident with your aim and speed and you think you can disintegrate the pellets with your laser before they hit the water, so that's option one.
So shoot the pellets with laser. Option two. Option two, if you rush immediately to the water's edge and dump the antidote into the reservoir. If I can spell it, reservoir, reservoir. And then option three is if you first take out the stun gun from between the handlebars of the motorcycle and try to immobilize Ima and the man. That's tough. Okay, so option one is shoot the pellets with the laser. Option two, dump the antidote in the reservoir. Option three, try to stun gun the two. Yeah, and ETS, you can change your vote if you want. So vote now, you've got three options. Okay, so Nixius, you're saying three, use the stun gun. Because it's, it's just like time is frozen. They're just like about to dump the pellets in the water. Anybody else? So we have one vote for three. Option three. This is Vampire Spies and Alien Beings game book while we wait for Hero Quest people to show up. All right, number three. I have a feeling this one's gonna be quick and decisive. We'll see. How good of a spy are you really? I mean, this is, is this like a super realistic spy thriller or is it kind of like a, oh, we're getting an ad here. Okay, I guess we'll just keep you in suspense while the ad plays and then we'll try it. Once again, shout out to uh, Carl Casey of White Bat Audio for the music. Alright, so you first take out the stun gun from between the handlebars of the motorcycle. Try to immobilize Ima and the man. All right, we're getting some more ads here. So, hey, strange bus, welcome. So, I took your advice. I mean, after listening to all that awesome audio from uh, White Bat, Carl Casey, I decided to check his stuff out, and we've got some perfect, uh, perfect music for what we're doing tonight. Doing a little game book reading while we're waiting. So hi. This is still HeroQuest fans, but um, I got a guy coming at nine. So we passed through the first hour. And we are reading Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. Yeah. This stuff is a little too a uh, little too upbeat and high for like the questing but for this it's perfect okay so yeah it's uh, vote time so we have three options so the two uh, saboteurs or terrorists or spies whatever you want to call them bad people Ema snake and uh, her male companion they're dumping the uh, receptor pellets into the reservoir and the idea is that they're going to combine this with some type of subliminal uh, messages to uh, mind control the population of Los Angeles. So you caught them in the act. They're about to dump the pills into the reservoir. Now you have the antidote. So you have three options. Option one is you try to take your laser and shoot the pellets in midair as they're being dumped into the water to destroy them. Option two, dump the antidote into the water. Option three, take your stun gun out and stun them. So, we've got one vote. Anixius voted for three. Jacer voted for three. I mean, there's only one other person, so I think we're going with option three. We're going to try to take the stun gun out. All right. As you are detaching the stun gun from its holster, as quickly as you can, the man shot, yells, Freeze, or I'll shoot! It is then that you know that you're doomed. But you also know that you must save the people of the city. Secretly gripping the antidote capsules in your hand, you toss them with all your might into the water. Right after you hear the splash, you hear the gunshot. 
the end. Ah. So you took one for the team. You, uh, you put the antidote into the reservoir, and they didn't know it. It's secret. So even though they shot you, the people will be saved. The plan is thwarted. Kind of a grim ending, but um, you accomplished your mission. Now the thing is, the whole thing was on the movie set. The movies came came to life because of the aliens meddling. So they created a threat, but then within that reality, you stopped it. So I guess that was a good ending. Yep, heroic sacrifice. That's what heroes do, right? I mean, being heroic, it's not that you're not afraid. It's not that you're, you don't feel pain. You don't feel fear. But you do what's right, no matter what. No matter the cost. You do what's right. Yep. Okay, well, um, now that we've got some, uh, some more people here, let's decide what we're going to do. Are we going to play Hero Quest now? Do we have our heroes? I know Jacer was uh, getting some dinner. Anixius is celebrating with um, a th young three-year-old birthday. Strange Bus, are you wanting to start it up? Is it? 